I grew up in a supersized family. There were 14 people in our home, my grandmother, two parents, and 11 kids. That's me sitting on my dad's lap. Now, don't do the numbers because it won't add up. Four more were born after this picture was taken. Seven boys, four girls, two bathrooms. As you can imagine, school mornings were a little bit chaotic, although we did have a lot of systems in place. My mother and father would wake up early, share a cup of coffee and breakfast, and my dad would have to leave to go work on the railroad. That gave my mom a little bit of quiet time before she had to start knocking on all those doors, making sure that we were getting up and ready for school. Now, most of us, well, most of us sat down together, two or three at a time, having some cereal. And all the while, I would be looking in the kitchen. My mother was very, very busy. She would take out a box of little brown bags, and in her very beautiful handwriting, she would write each one of our names very carefully on the front of the bags. She would line those bags on the front of the kitchen counter. Next, she would start making mounds of sandwiches and wrapping them up and putting them in each one of those bags. That was usually followed by some potato chips and on a really good day, some cookies. Next, she would take an aluminum foil roll, she cut a piece off, and she'd break it into very small squares. In each one of those squares, she put three little pennies. She'd wrap those up, and she popped them in each one of those bags. That was so we can buy a carton of milk when we got to school to enjoy with our lunch. Obviously, a few mango seasons would go. Now, before we went off to school, my mother would always, always hug us, always give us a big kiss. And before we left, she would take each one of us, and she'd look us in the eye and say, be on your best behavior. I know you'll make us proud. Be on your best behavior. I know you'll make us proud. I heard those words every single day, as well as my 10 brothers and sisters. It was a tradition. It was a touch tone to start the day. Traditions touch us, they connect us, and they expand us. That early morning tradition it touched me because I felt so much love. It connected me because it was something I shared with my family. And then it expanded me because I took those same feelings with me to school. And ultimately, when I became a mother of my own, our little son, he knew early on I was going to establish a tradition. And at the end of every conversation with him, I always say, Make good choices. I love you. And although he's 24, half the time, I do admit, he beats me to it and he says, I know, Mom, make good choices. So I hope he feels it's a touchstone to him, just like that touchstone and that tradition was that I experienced from my mother. Now, I want you to think back to when you were growing up. What were the traditions that you shared? Maybe it was a special dinner, a picnic. Maybe it was just a special little ritual that you followed with, with your family. Are you still practicing them? And didn't they touch you? Didn't they connect you? And then didn't they expand you? And now think about social traditions. In our communities, we have the Girl Scouts who are known for those s'mores and the Boy Scouts going on that annual camping trip. But then you get into work. You get into the work environment, and I call that the T word, because I think traditions at work have gotten a bad rap. I do think traditions 
at work are really read to believe another way of holding on to the status quo. Some people think they're against everything we've learned about being progressive, productive, creative, innovative, right? I say that's wrong. Traditions at work can actually bring a sense of community and results in positive work environments that enables you to attract and retain the very, very best in talent. But we have to change our perception of traditions. I started studying traditions, and I first looked at culture. It's a way of thinking, behaving, doing. It really speaks to all those rituals that we put in place, right? In 2014, culture was the most looked up word on the online dictionary. Perhaps there's a lot of people really trying to find a sense of community and connection. And then I looked at tradition. And while the definition looked very similar, a way of thinking, behaving, and doing, tradition is really taking those practices and passing them on generation to generation. It's really part of the whole cultural ecosystem that really brings life to values in an organization and creates a huge environment. You know, I thought everybody had traditions. I had one that I practiced when I worked in corporate America. It was really exciting. I worked for a company in Florida, had offices all over the state. And on an annual basis, they had a fabulous Christmas party. This was before holiday parties. It involved hundreds and hundreds of employees, thousands of volunteer hours, and all the children of the employees, thousands of them as well. And I'll never forget going to the party. And it really began when the kids started singing, Here Comes Santa Claus. And the big red velvet curtains would open, the orchestra stage would rise, and there was Santa standing there among all these huge piles of glistening packages. And the employees, their children, they would come up to the stage by age, from the very, very smallest to the very tallest. I wish you could have seen their eyes. This was about Christmas, but the neat thing was, it was about so much more. It was a tradition that was all about opening up communication, breaking down barriers. It was about learning about families. It was about giving back. And while over time the company got larger and those parties were eliminated and replaced with smaller holiday parties, when I still run into friends who worked on those events 30 years ago, we all talk about how amazing they were and how they touched us, they connected us, and they expanded us. And isn't it true that some of the most powerful traditions connect us in a way that lasts far beyond the tradition itself? Now, traditions in the family, they touch us, connect us, and expand us, just like the one my mom started. Those feelings can also be felt at work. If we put in place traditions that connect people, the Gallup organization does an annual survey on employee engagement. And the last research shows that only 70% of employees, or 70% of employees, are disengaged at work, meaning they're not motivated to get up to, the, to do their jobs. Only 30% like what they do. They go on to look at how many people are actively disengaged. These are people who really don't want to be there. They hate their job, and quite frankly, they might even be trying to hurt you or somebody at the, at the workplace. As somebody who's been in human resources for over 40 years, I find these statistics so disappointing. And when I ask CEOs, why do you think the engagement numbers are so low? They're so quick to say, it's technology, it's the economy, it's the millennials, it's Generation Next, it's all these things out there, when in reality, I think it all resides right here. If, in fact, companies today would put in place traditions that would touch, connect, and expand, they will, in fact, be able to reduce these numbers and build winning environments. 
Now, what does it look like when I say touch? In work environments today, there's three to five generations sitting next to one another. And we live in a very, very connected world. But I think you'll agree, we operate very disconnected at times. So it's a matter of finding out what makes each person tick, spending time with them. In terms of connect, what are you doing to bring people together so that they know each other and they can laugh just like we did when we were working on that party. I have a friend who has weekly meetings, and the first 15 minutes are strictly about the employees. A, there, it's a conversation strictly about the people who are in the room, just to show an interest and show caring about them as human beings. And then they get into the agenda at heart. And then I love this saying from actress Gina Bellman, talks about loving those connections that take this big old world and change it into a little village. It's always nice to have that little village where you feel like you have a friend and somebody cares about you. I think most people want that at work today. They don't want to feel like a number, they really want to feel like somebody cares. And then expand. Expand is the job of leadership. Leaders need to make sure traditions are inclusive, that everybody can participate. Maybe it's a department level, division level, or company-wide, or even globally, because we do work around the globe today through electronics. And it has to be consistent. If it's not consistent, it's just a little bleep on the calendar. It's not a tradition if it's not practiced over time. And then you have to be willing to change some traditions. Some traditions just need to go away. They're dysfunctional, and they're not giving you the results you need. Some traditions just need to go to tradition rehabilitation, get a few changes made to them. And then some, we think, are stale, and we should just throw them away because we've been doing them for a long, long time. My family, as you can imagine, has a very large Thanksgiving dinner, usually three to four turkeys, lots of dressing, lots of good food. A couple years ago, one of my siblings said, you know, why don't we try something different? Why don't we have a Thanksgiving that's all full of Italian food? We got excited about it. Everybody got their assignments, everything from garlic bread to tiramisu. And it was magnificent. It was delicious. But before the evening was over, people started piping up and saying, I miss Aunt Gloria's sweet potato casserole, Grandma's stuffing, oh, that apple pie. And we very quickly realized we lost that connection and all those years of wonderful memories. So we went back to our original tra tradition we had practiced so many years. So the Gallup organization looks at disengagement, $450 billion in lost productivity just in the United States alone. How can you afford not to look at transformative traditions to create winning work environments? The question is, what are you willing to do to harness the power of traditions? Look at the ones that work. If they're working well, celebrate them and continue them. Maybe you need to add a few. Or maybe in your home life, in your families. Maybe some fell, fell to the wayside a couple years ago and you thought, you know what, we want to bring them back. Involve a lot of people in that. Or maybe it's your community or your schools. It doesn't have to be expensive doesn't have to take a lot of time, and it's never too late to start them. And you know, it could be as easy as a little phrase, like, be on your best behavior, I know you'll make us proud, and put love in a little brown bag. Thank you.